The prize is his life. How about the life? The Running Man. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be talking about the newest release from Paramount Studios, The Running Man, on 4K Blu-ray. But before we do that, if you guys are into movie reviews, 4K reviews, some tech, and some video game along the way, then please consider subscribing, because we do all that here. So The Running Man was released in 1987, directed by Paul Michael Glasser, and it comes in at a clean 100 minute runtime. So now The Running Man stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, one of my favorite action heroes or movie stars, because uh, he's in my favorite movie of all time, The Terminator. And there's actually a callback in this movie. He does quote, I'll be back. And that's not the first movie, and it's probably not the last movie he's done it in, because he that was just an iconic line from The Terminator. And uh, they, they found a way to pepper it in in this. So this is the 35th anniversary of The Running Man. Uh, Paramount put out a pretty nice set here. I have actually never seen this movie. This is my first time. This was a first time watch for me. Um, somehow this slipped through the cracks because I, I love all 80s action and all Arnold's movies and somehow this one slipped through the cracks and this is a total Matt movie. Really glad I picked it up and watched it for the first time and uh, I had a great time watching it. So basically this is kind of reminding me of the movie Death Race a little bit, minus the cars. So basically there is a big chunk of real estate or property or land in the city where there was some sort of incident or whatever, but now they use it as a game show. Now The Running Man is a game show. So Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, Ben Richardson, was uh, wrongfully accused of massacring a ton of people down in innocent people down in the streets and he was uh he was in the army and he disobeyed orders not to kill these people they framed him and made it look like that he did do it and he was the only one single-handedly killing all these innocent people where he was the only one that didn't want to kill these people so he was the good guy wrongfully accused and he gets put into a prison he breaks out woman that works for the TV studio because the world today it, it's a very rundown place and then there is it's just like a, they use the word dystopian community and it's just a rundown dirty gritty Los Angeles but then there's the higher upper class the people that have the money and live in luxury while everyone else is suffering on the streets there's the resistance out on the streets and then the corporate media world out in the high-rise apartments this world revolves heavily around the TV and the media and basically whatever is on that TV they just believe and obey kind of like today uh, which is kind of a problem and this you know this kind of relates to that but we're not going to jump into that people should kind of realize you don't you shouldn't believe everything that's on TV and this is the perfect example of why so Arnold's being framed for this tragic incident where he tried to protect all these people but he didn't so now he's in prison he escaped he finds a way out and as and then he went to his brother's apartment and it turns out that his brother doesn't live there anymore and this woman lives there and she actually works for the the new the TV station so he kind of holds her hostage just to get out of harm's way and try to get out of the get out of the state and run for the border or somewhere safe and she kind of gives him up at the airport he gets held into captivity where they hold him and they want to put him on the running man show because the running man show is the biggest thing in this world uh everyone watches it everyone's betting on it uh, it's all about the ratings and that is just a big part of their world and their community so he they want to put him on there because he's this big guy that you know he's he's got a big famous name because he's the one that massacred all these people but he really didn't you know he didn't choose to do this they they wanted to put him on there because they they saw the big name they figured hey this is gonna bring ratings and because that's what that's all that mattered was the ratings so he's in the game show now and just this is where the movie really starts to unfold and really stretch its legs and there's a ton of action in there there's some good kills um and you know it, they and then he starts to win the game and they're trying to cover it up as it's happening they're just telling more lies over the tv screen and it just it gets pretty crazy and it was just a really really fun movie and spoilers in the end he ends up beating the game well not so much beating the game just 
winning one over them. He he kills all the people that are uh, assigned to kill him, and he ends up getting out safe with his friends, and he gets the girl in the end, and he brings down the corporate media, and you know he, he exposes them for what they are, the liars, and he kills the game show host, and it was just overall it was really good. It was really fun. Uh, I had a great time watching it. It's definitely worth the watch. And like I said, this is definitely a big time Matt movie. This is definitely going to be in the rotation. This is prime Arnold. He was pretty young in this in 87. This is only a few years after the Terminator. So, you know, he, again, they, they peppered in, uh, I'll be back. I'm going to give this a four out of five as far as the movie goes. You know, it had some corny one-liners. It had some bang up job acting by Arnold. You know, he has, he's not the best actor in the world, but we just love him anyway. And just his acting style is just awesome. Uh, everybody else played a, a great role in the movie and it just it was a pretty good story pretty believable for the most part you know there's some little holes here and there but no big deal you know I, I enjoyed it I had a great time watching it so with all that being said let's jump into the physical release from Paramount so as I said earlier this is the 35th anniversary and this is the first time this movie has been on 4K. Uh, it's been on Blu-ray for a while, and I never picked it up on Blu-ray, so this is my first time watch. Now, right off the bat, this is a this is a slipcover over a steelbook. So that is um, this is what the norm should be, um, you know, because the steelbooks are nice and all. But like I said, I've kind of stopped getting steelbooks because I like all the information on the back. This is the best of both worlds. You get a beautiful steelbook and a beautiful slipcover over the steelbook. And it's, the slipcover is definitely a little thicker. It kind of reminds me like the Blue Underground um, slipcovers where they're, they're just a little bit bigger than a normal Blu-ray. But that's fine. It, it, and you know, it has a, just a big, big spine on it. So it really stands out on the shelf. I, I like that. So you got the nice metallic looking slip cover over there with the the box art on there you got all your information on the back and then once you slide this puppy off we have a beautiful steel book you know it really ties into the movie i mean that's the one thing with steel books um they tend to tie into the movie a lot so if you've never seen the movie sometimes you look at a steel book and you don't really know what it means but now you can see these are all the they're called stalkers that's uh, the people that are have to kill the running man so you got Sub-Zero in there, Buzzsaw, and actually Buzzsaw. I'm curious if maybe, remember in the original Spider-Man, Macho Man Randy Savage plays uh, Buzzsaw in the ring against Peter Parker? Buzzsaw is ready. You're going nowhere. I got you for three minutes. I wonder if they got that from here. That'd be pretty cool, you know, a little homage to the running man in the original Spider-Man. Back of the Steelbook. It has the, the big TV screen on there, and that's the entrance into the Running Man show, which is pretty cool. These are all the, the, the people watching. And uh, it's just overall, it's, it's really nice. I like the colors, the metallic look. And then once you pop this open, you have a little bit of art on the inside, and there's the announcer under the disc. So as you noticed, this is just the 4K, which is fine. You know, I don't really believe you need the Blu-ray. When people are buying 4Ks, how many people actually look at the Blu-rays? Um, the only time they really do that is when they put special features and they don't fit on the disc, they'll put them on a Blu-ray. Uh, so there's no Blu-ray here. Uh, there's one thing I did want to note. There is zero, not a single special feature on this disc. I don't know if the Blu-ray release has any because I don't have that, but there is not one single special feature. You turn this on, it goes straight to the, the main menu. You can select your scenes, you can go to your setup, you can select your audio and that's it. But that's fine because I mean, I generally don't really watch too many special features unless I'm like absolutely in love with the movie. I mean, I'm cool with that. It, it doesn't bother me. Some people might be offended that there's not a single special feature on here, but uh, I didn't really mind it too much. Let's talk about the 4K scan. So Paramount blessed us with a Dolby Vision 4K scan. Um, so it looked really good. Um, Borderline fantastic. Uh, you know, I, I don't have an old Blu-ray or a DVD for reference. I can only imagine this looks worlds better than any DVD or VHS out there. And uh, I'm willing to bet a ton of money that this looks much better than the previous Blu-ray release because there is a lot of color, like specifically when they're on the TV set, there's a ton of colors. Um, Arnold's wearing this bright yellow jumpsuit, spandex jumpsuit and there's just lights and cameras and colors everywhere. And 
they just really popped. You know, the again, the Dolby Vision really makes everything look fantastic. Um, the colors really just, they get a little more vivid and they just pop right off the screen. And then there's the dark backgrounds and then you got the colors in front of the dark backgrounds and the contrast. It just, it just looks really good. So I, I, I want to say the scan is very well done. Um, there is a lot of dark scenes. Well, the movie has a lot of dark scenes, but they don't look too dark. Again, the Dolby Vision really, really helps out in those dark scenes. So when they're in like some dark alleys or a dark part of the warehouse before a, a light flips on, you can see what's going on, but it looks as it's intended. Um, the skin tones on all the, the actors, they looked perfect. Um, you know, I, I think this is a fantastic scan. I think Paramount did great work. Paramount has been really killing it lately. You know, we had Top Gun, which was out of this world, the best 4K disc I've seen in a long time. And, you know, with the exception of the Friday the 13th that came out a couple months ago, which I still didn't find was too bad, but there was a couple things you can nitpick on that disc, but that was, that's a different story. But again, I think Paramount has really, really stepped it up lately and they're putting out some great releases. Um, as far as the audio goes, no Atmos track. So there's a DTS HD 5.1 Master Audio. I, I think that's what was on the previous Blu-ray. Uh, it still sounded good, you know, there was some a lot of stuff going on in the rear speakers. Uh, the fronts sounded great, they were nice and loud in your face, the subwoofer was kicking. So it didn't sound bad. Again, I would have loved an Atmos track. I always will take a point off when there's not an Atmos track added and it's just a 5.1. Because that's the beautiful thing. We're getting a Dolby Vision disc without an Atmos. Eh, you know, that's kind of a miss in my opinion. But again, it didn't sound bad. I just would have liked the Atmos. So overall, I think Paramount did a fantastic job. I really, like, I, as soon as I opened this up out of the packaging, um, when I un unboxed it, I was like, holy shit, this is beautiful. And, uh, you know, again, I didn't see the movie first, so I looked at this stuff. I was like, okay, whatever. That's cool. But after seeing it, I really appreciate what they did with the box art. I think it looks really awesome. Um, you know, the TV set, it had that, like, that 80s just vibe to it where it just, everything is just bright and square and exaggerated like like they thought the future would be in the 80s. And it just, I, I eat that shit up. I, I love that. I think Paramount did a great job with this. Um, the scan itself, I'm going to give the scan a 9 out of 10. I think it looked beautiful up on my TV. I used the Panasonic UB820 4K player with my LG OLED uh, TV and it looked great. It also sounded good, you know, I mean I would have liked that Atmos track but the 5.1 was perfectly fine, it sounded fine. You know, there probably was room for improvement but, you know, we got what we got and we can't change that. But the packaging alone really steps it up for me. So overall, I'm going to give this release an 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was visually looked fantastic. The audio sounded fine. Would have liked an Atmos track. But the packaging itself, this, this really nice slip cover over that super nice steelbook. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Um, the lack of special features or a Blu-ray disc. Not the end of the world for me. A deal breaker for you, maybe consider picking up the Blu-ray. I'm not too sure if there's special features on that also, but if you want the definitive way to watch Running Man, you want it the best it's ever looked, this is it right here. 35th anniversary 4K. If you guys want to pick this up, down in the description we'll put our affiliate link so you can grab this from Amazon and see for yourself and add this beautiful piece to your collection. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. It's Monday and that means it's time for us to spin this magic wheel and find out who this week's two lucky winners of the digital code giveaway are. Now I actually already did the giveaway so that's why the wheel isn't behind me right now. But trust me, I already know who the guys are. You gotta see the wheel in the video. So if you're new to the channel and you're wondering what we're doing here, well every Friday I ask two digital code giveaway questions. All you have to do is answer one and if you did you come back to this video we spin the magic wheel twice, we pick two winners, and those winners have their choice of the digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you today. So this week we actually asked you what was your favorite Steven Spielberg movie, and we also asked you what was your favorite family movie of all time. 
So we got a lot of great answers in there. Um, a lot of people agree with me. E.T. is the best Steven Spielberg movie. But then a lot of people agree with him, Matt that Jaws is the best Steven Spielberg movie. Then we got some Jurassic Park, some Close Encounters. I saw a lot from Minority Report. I love Minority Report. And I'm still holding out that we'll get a 4K of that sometime soon. We already got War of the Worlds, so I don't know what's holding back Minority Report. Maybe it's Tom Cruise. Who knows? So anyway, we're going to spin this magic wheel today, and we're going to see who those two lucky winners are. Wheel spin number one, coming up. <laughs> Jeff Ray. All right, Jeff, we're going to remove you from the next wheel spin. And we are going to do this again. Emmanuel! Congratula congratulations, Emmanuel. All right, congratulations, Emmanuel and Jeff. Jeff, I think this might be your second win. Emmanuel, that's your first win. Congratulations. And for everybody who didn't win this week, please come back to Friday's video, and we'll see, and we'll do this all again. You All you gotta do is answer this Friday's giveaway questions, and then you'll be entered into this week's digital code giveaway. But for our two winners, you guys, this is how it works. All you gotta do is hit us up on one of our social media. That's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or you can always email us at letstalkentmt at gmail.com. Just let us know which digital code you want, and we'll send it right over, as long as the other winner didn't get to us first and pick that code before you do. But again, I just want to thank everybody who has entered into the digital code giveaway. We really do appreciate any support that you guys have given us on the channel. It really does mean the world to us. We're growing at a pretty fast rate, and it's all thanks to you. This would not be possible without all you, and I just want to thank you guys all so much, and I want you guys to enjoy your week, and I want you to go out there and tell all your friends about us. Mm -hmm.